Could this Marine Corps backpack solve Ukraine's FPV drone problem? You might be surprised to learn that this backpack's maker, Thor Dynamics, is testing its anti-drone backpack right now in Ukraine. Now, we've talked about offensive counter drone systems on this channel, like the Smart Shooter Scope and the Slinga from Australia. But what about defensive counter drone systems? Good eye mites, Wes O'Donnell here, veteran of the US Army and the US Air Force, and unapologetic Ukraine supporter. I talk about military technology and I hate authoritarians. Oh, and I believe good old fashioned common sense can solve most problems. We've almost hit 30,000 subscribers in just two months because I have the best audience. Seriously, you folks could be my wingman any day. Okay, let's jump in. Russia's biggest win in 2024 has arguably been its ability to replicate Ukraine's drone war with small FPV drones, something Ukraine pioneered at scale in the first year of the war. The YouTube channel Garand Thumb I know people in America call the weapon the Garand, but the actual inventor of the weapon, John Garand, pronounced his own name Garand, so that's how I say it. What are we talking about here? Oh, the YouTube channel Garand Thumb recently spoke to two volunteers from Ukraine's International Legion, a British Army sniper and a US Army paratrooper. These men had been fighting recently in Ukraine, including engagements in Bakhmut. To illustrate how disruptive Russia's drone warfare has become, the soldiers said they would completely abandon patrols if they were spotted by a loitering Russian drone. Quote, if we spot a drone, we'll try to conceal ourselves as quickly as possible. But if the drone stays above us for five to 10 minutes, we bug out, end quote. They said what usually happens next is the drone will coordinate a Russian artillery strike or call in other FPV drones with explosives. In other words, if it's clear that the drone spotted them, the Ukrainians and their allies return to rear areas where they know they'll have hardened top cover. As you might imagine, this makes advancing or gaining any ground a slog. Electronic warfare, EW systems, have proved to be the most effective way of stopping drones. Both sides use EW systems to jam radio frequencies in certain areas. When a drone signal is jammed, the pilot loses the ability to control the drone or loses the video signal, depending on which frequency has been disrupted. But so far, these jammers on both sides have been large, relatively immobile EW systems. While observing Ukraine's and Russia's FPV war, I remembered a neat piece of kit from my own days in the military during the War on Terror. In Afghanistan and Iraq, insurgents frequently used RC IEDs, exploding, cheap, and readily available wireless devices such as cell phones and garage door openers to trigger explosive devices remotely. In response, the US military deployed a variety of electronic jammers designed to block the transmission of RF signals that could detonate these IEDs. The formal name for the US IED jammers is Counter Radio Controlled Electronic Warfare, or CREW. Initially, these jammers were large vehicle mounted systems that provided a protective bubble around convoys, which were the main targets of IED attacks. These systems, while effective, were not suitable for dismounted infantry operations due to their size, weight, and power requirements. As a result, uh, US Marines sought ways to defeat IEDs while dismounted on foot, which could be especially useful in booby-trapped urban settings. In 2016, the Sierra Nevada Corporation in Sparks, Nevada won a $73.2 million Marine Corps contract to provide Marine Expeditionary Units with 581 Modi 2 backpacks. Originally called the Thor 2 backpack, this upgraded, lighter weight version allowed the Marines to jam radio signals close by and used three different transceivers to jam a different frequency bandwidth, low, mid, and high frequencies. Perhaps most interesting, the Modi backpack jams the same frequencies that modern consumer drones use. DJI drones use the 2.4 gigahertz band and 
5.8 gigahertz band in urban settings to communicate. What's more, this equipment can be custom configured to block different frequency bands from VHF to UHF and higher satellite and cellular phone bandwidths. And jamming is just the tip of the iceberg. Minor adjustments to these systems can also help create a map of the radio landscape, help pinpoint the positions of targets of interest, as well as collect other actionable signals intelligence. Ideally then, every Ukrainian squad should have at least one member carrying a Modi or a Thor on his back, or at least one per company. A Ukrainian mechanized battalion has headquarters and headquarters company, three to four infantry companies, a mortar battery, grenade platoons, reconnaissance platoon, an air defense platoon, typically armed with stingers or IGLA man pads, an engineer and sapper platoon, a signals platoon, a battalion medical center, a forward support company, a technical support platoon, and a material support platoon. And half of those units I just listed are relatively static and don't need portable EW systems like backpacks. But the other half do, especially units like the reconnaissance platoon or the engineers. Ukraine was very quick to integrate drone companies into its order of battle. A typical Ukrainian fighting battalion has at least one drone company. Most have at least two, one unit for artillery spotting and FPV strikes, and the other one for bomb dropping. So integrating force-wide EW backpacks should be straightforward. And there is a record of the Department of Defense sending Ukraine some form of counter drone systems in 2022 and 2023. The issue here is one of scale. Drones are exponentially cheaper and far more ubiquitous than jamming equipment on the Ukrainian battlefield. The difference is $126,000 per backpack versus $5,000 for an FPV drone. But Ukraine doesn't need to wait on an American company. The Ukrainian government aims to make a million FPV drones in 2024. To put that in context, it's around double the number of artillery shells supplied by the entire European Union over the past year. Ukraine has also homegrown counter drone systems that are far cheaper than the American-made backpacks. Ukrainian company Kvirtis makes the M50 counter FPV drone backpack, a portable double band FPV drone jamming system designed to be worn on a soldier's back. It has an omnidirectional UAV blocking range of 150 meters, but here's the best part. They're only about $7,000. They also have more expensive EW backpacks that jam both FPV drones and bomb dropping drones like the DJI Mavic with a range of 150 meters, a single M50 backpack could protect a platoon size element of 30 soldiers. Uh, th that might be pushing it a little bit. It could definitely protect a squad of 10 soldiers. Given Russian developments in this area, it should be clear to Western military planners that a robust man portable counter drone strategy needs to be implemented force wide. And it's worth noting that a cheap, highly available counter drone backpack is only one stage in the endless game of cat and mouse going on in Ukraine right now, especially as it applies to EW. The US is already developing drones guided by artificial intelligence. These drones identify and lock onto their targets without the need for communication with their pilot, making them impervious to signal jamming. Having thousands of small explosive drones swarming the battlefield where the AI makes the decision what to attack might defeat electronic warfare measures in the short term. But then the next step is to implement tactics to fool the AI. This could be as simple as the enemy dressing like a friendly unit so the drone won't attack or as complex as fooling the AI electronically into thinking it's behind friendly lines when it's actually over enemy territory. The Ukrainian battlefield is proving that electronic warfare is more important now than it's ever been. But AI, and this is my professional opinion, will definitely be the next evolution on the battlefield in 2025. We must get Ukraine the tools it needs to win this fight. That's it. 
Subscribe if you're not already so we can hit that 30K goal. The bigger the audience, the more we can combat Russian disinformation. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraini.